Happy New Year everyone! This is my first Carry KH video of 2023. But you might be wondering, what in the world are we looking at right now? Well, it's a visualization on how to solve the world famous river crossing puzzle. Ted Ed already made a fantastic video explaining and solving this puzzle in 2016, but I want to try a different solving approach that takes advantage of the fact that the human brain likes seeing things in three dimensions. First though, we gotta learn how this puzzle works. We have three Santas and three dinosaurs. And they're all trying to cross to the other side of this river. Pretend this is a river so they can't just walk around the sides of it. By the way, all six creatures here are on the same team. Maybe they're fleeing from a common enemy, like a wildfire. To cross this river, none of these creatures can swim, so they're gonna have to use this one and only raft, which can hold up to two creatures. Three of any type will cause it to sink. So the raft could be steered by two Santas, one Santa, two dinosaurs, one dinosaur, or one of each. With no creatures on board, of course the raft can't cross the river because there's no one to steer it. But there's one final caveat. Even though the dinosaurs and the Santas are all friends, the dinosaurs still have this biological urge to eat humans. This means that if the dinosaurs outnumber the Santas on either side of the river at any point in their journey, the dinosaurs can't help but eat the Santa, killing him. This is true even if it only happens for an instant during a raft transfer, such as when this dinosaur comes to the right side, plans on picking up this Santa, but for a brief moment, there's two Yoshis on the right side and one Santa, and the dinosaurs will start devouring them from the flesh. So at the end of the day, what is the puzzle? Can all six creatures cross to the other side of the river without any of them dying due to getting eaten, drowning, or being stranded on the left side as the wildfire comes in? So get some pencil and paper out, try some random combinations of raft usages from both sides and see what you get. So Ted Ed's video on this very puzzle uses lions and wildebeest instead of dinosaurs and santas, which I think is a cute change of pace. Ted Ed uses a methodical approach to solve the puzzle that involves decision trees and it almost reminds me of a recursive breath first search. At every stage along the way, they ask, would it make sense to do option A? No? Then by process of elimination we must do option B instead. Now this does help them arrive at a valid solution, but I want to try something different that shows me the entire game state space at once. The only relevant variables we need to keep track of are the number of Santas who have made it to the right side of the river, which can range from zero to three, as well as the number of dinosaurs who have made it to the right bank, and that's also zero to three. And finally, the number of rafts, which can only range from zero, it's on the left, to one, it's on the right. Let's graph each variable onto an axis in 3D space. We start at the origin, 0, 0, 0. One Santa crossing the river moves you one unit on the x-axis. One dinosaur crossing the river moves you one unit on the y-axis. And one raft crossing the river moves you one unit in the z-axis. Ignore the legality of these moves right now, I'm just showing you how this space works. So let's look at some examples. If we were to move one Santa, one dinosaur, and one raft to the finish line at the same time, that corresponds with the vector 1, 1, 1. And if we teleport one Santa, two dinosaurs, and no rafts, that corresponds with the vector 1, 2, 0. Moving all three Santas to the end with the raft corresponds with the vector 3, 0, 1. And finally, our winning destination is when everybody makes it to the finish line, which corresponds with the vector 3, 3, 1. If we can just get from the pink point at the origin to the pink point at the opposite diagonal, 331, we win the puzzle! Now let's focus on just valid moves again. As I mentioned before, we can move one Santa, which corresponds with the vector 101, or two Santas, which corresponds with the vector 201 or one dinosaur, which is 0, 1, 1, or two dinosaurs, which is 0, 2, 1, or finally, we can move one of each, which is 1, 1, 1. All of these moves also take the raft, which you can tell by all these vectors having a z-coordinate of 1. Starting from the origin, you can now see what neighbor nodes we are able to access with one move. But of course, there's nothing special about the origin. If the game instead started with one Santa already on the other side of the river, all legal moves would be the same. They'd just stem out of the point 100 instead of 000. So with that, here's the fun part. You see this five line shape we've got, which is just the neighborhood of one vertex? Since moves can start from pretty much anywhere, we'll just copy and paste that shape onto all vertices in the graph. 
Look at that, isn't it beautiful? Of course, we just have to discard any connectors that bleed off the boundaries of the grid, but that's not too hard. Now, with this setup, we can interpret any valid move of our original river crossing puzzle as our cursor traversing the edges of this graph. By the way, all river crossings are reversible, so this is a bi-directional graph. It's also a bipartite graph, because there's two sets of vertices, above and below, such that every edge connects from one set to the other. Another synonym for this is that it's too colorable, which, ignoring the pink endpoints, I've already colored in white and gold. Like the dress. Anyway, we're getting close to finding a solution, but we can't forget the caveat that dinosaurs will eat Santas if they ever outnumber them on either bank. This means there are certain states we have to avoid, but which ones? Well first, these points on the diagonal represent where Y y equals x, meaning the number of dinosaurs and santas on the end bank are equal, so the number on the starting bank are also equal, so these are safe. But for these points y is greater than x, dinosaurs outnumber santas on the end bank, so no good. But on the flip side, for these points y is less than x, santas outnumber dinosaurs on the end bank. That makes it seem like the santas should be alright, power in numbers. But look at this example diagram. There are indeed two santas outnumbering the one dino, but those are just the creatures on the end bank, x. All creatures we haven't accounted for, 3 minus x, must be on the start bank. So here we have one Santa which is actually less than the two dinos. That means these points are also no good, because the Santas at the starting line are outnumbered and are getting eaten. Okay, so does this all mean we're only safe on the diagonal? That would be a shame, because it only contains 8 of the total 32 points, and within them, there aren't enough edges to connect the start to the end. Fortunately, we can realize that when there's zero Santas at at the end, or zero Santas at the beginning, that's actually okay. Why? Well for example, at a point like here, the two dinos at the end are technically outnumbering the zero Santas at the end, but there's zero Santas. There's just nobody there to be a victim to eating. This means that the vertical edges of this graph are entirely safe, along with the diagonal, creating this backwards end shape of traversability. Only the 12 points not on the end, where x doesn't equal y and x is not 0 or 3, are dangerous. I'll highlight these dangerous points red to remind ourselves to avoid them. We can also remove any edge that connects to a red vertex, since we'll never want to travel to them. That reduces our edge count from 49 to 17, leaving us with our final graph that's simple enough that we can just visually trace out a solution to this river crossing puzzle. Here it is. Two dinos cross, one dino returns. Two dinos cross, one dino returns. Two Santas cross, one dino and one Santa return. Two Santas cross, one dino returns. Two dinos cross, one dino returns. And finally, two dinos cross. And there we go. That's one way to get all three Santas and all three dinosaurs to the other side of the river. And with that, we've solved the river crossing puzzle using a bit of graph theory and without having to do any trial and error. The solution takes 11 moves, 8 of which involve only dinos, 2 involving only Santas, and 1 which involves both, although alternate solutions do give the Santas more game time. I like looking at the puzzle this way because it assures me there aren't any decision paths I've overlooked. Every state that can be explored has been. Also, if we pull apart the nodes to get a better picture of the structure of the connections, it can show us how many optimal solutions there are. There's two choices here and two choices there, so that's four possible paths that have length 11. Why do these two splits occur? Well, for your very first and very last move, instead of moving two dinos across and one dino back, you can choose to move one Santa and one dino instead, and then move the Santa back. There are no other splits along the rest of the path, meaning your free will is actually pretty limited. Perhaps that's the allegory for real life. Only your childhood and your golden years are truly yours to enjoy and experiment with fully, and for the rest of it you're trapped on one path with one motivation, financially sustaining yourself. And finally, a fun way to expand this puzzle is to ask if it's possible with not three, but four Santas and four dinosaurs. With a simple tweak to the code, we can expand the graph visually and instantly see there's no connecting path between the origin and 441. This tiny gap here represents the fact that we can't go from two of four dinos and Santas on either side and the raft at the start, to two of four dinos and Santas on either side and the raft at the end. And that makes all the difference. But if you allow for two rafts, 
it suddenly becomes possible again. This is because the four Santas are now able to fully cross the river using the two rafts back to back, meaning they're only separated and vulnerable for a brief moment in the middle. By the way, for this visualization, I stopped drawing the dangerous red vertices because they were cluttering everything up. Expanding further, five Santas and five dinosaurs can't cross the river even with two rafts to help them. This is for a similar reason as before, we can see there's this small gap in the middle that can't be crossed without some sort of illegal teleportation. But with three rafts, five Santas and five dinosaurs can cross. You might be starting to see a pattern here. The pattern is N Santas and N dinosaurs can cross the river if and only if we've got at least n minus 2 rafts. Why? Well, the gist of it is that the left and right sides of the graph will always be super easy to access because all the Santas are huddled together on one side with the largest possible population. So we can always spend four river crossings to get two dinosaurs to the other side using what I'm going to call coming to getcha moves. Then we'll leap onto the diagonal by moving two Santas over getting us to 2, 2, 1. Now we're trapped on this tightrope of a diagonal where the Santas are split up. Dinos and Santas have to cross over in pairs to maintain the balance so no one gets eaten. And they're gonna use one raft per pair. So wasteful. Eventually, we'll make it to the point n minus 2, n minus 2, n minus 3. The ending of the solution is a symmetrical flip of the beginning. By moving the last two Santas to the finish line, we can leap over to the right side of the graph. Then, as before, we'll spend four I'm coming to getcha moves to retrieve the last two dinos. And that's it. This solution generalizes to any n above four, I think. So that should help remove some of the mystery about the larger versions of this puzzle. Anyway, that's it for this puzzle solving video. I coded the visualizations in processing three. Also, yes, I realized the graphic says one dinosaur which isn't grammatically correct, but hey, this is math, not English. I hope you enjoyed watching and goodbye!